In the early days of telephone and telegraph, there was no standard for measuring and expressing signal loss over the length of a cable. Sometime in the early 1920s, a group of engineers from Bell Laboratories addressed this need by performing some tests. First, they introduced a 1,000 milliwatt signal onto a one-mile reel of telephone cable, then measured the loss at the other end. They discovered that the signal measured 100 milliwatts, or exactly 90% less than the original signal strength. Next, they attached a second mile of cable to the first and found that the signal dropped another 90% by order of magnitude. In other words, only 10 milliwatts of signal was measured after two miles. Then, a third mile of cable was attached to the first two, and their findings were the same. 90% more signal loss, or only one milliwatt of signal remained. By looking at these results, they could clearly see that the signal loss was the same order of magnitude from one mile to the next. They decided to express this loss by using a term called MSC, or Miles of Standard Cable. From that point on, when they would test different types of telephone cable from different manufacturers, they would assign an MSC value to each. For instance, if a cable exhibited 90% loss over one mile, it would be given a rating of minus one MSC. If a cable exhibited 45% loss over one mile, it would be given a rating of minus 0.5 MSC. Now this method wasn't perfect and was still very cumbersome to calculate in the field, but soon improvements would be made. But first, because telephone and telegraph were spreading across the globe, they needed to make a few tweaks to their terminology. In 1924, the MSC was changed to TU, or transmission unit, so that the same method could be used in other countries that don't measure distance in miles, which is basically everywhere but the U.S. In 1928, the folks at Bell Labs decided to rename the transmission unit to the Bell, in honor of the company's founder. Alexander Graham Bell. So, where does deci come from? Well, deci means 10, so decibel means one-tenth of a bell. This subdivision was developed so that increments between full bells could be expressed as a number instead of fractions or percentages. Unlike the MSC, or TU, or even the bell, the decibel gave the engineers a more descriptive and precise means to express signal loss or gain. Also, we should note that the abbreviation DB is how you will see decibels expressed. Prior to this tutorial, you may have thought that the term decibel was only used to express the volume or loudness of something. And it's true, the decibel is used to measure the intensity of sound pressure. But, as you've just learned, it's also a way to express signal loss or gain in a logarithmic manner. In other words, the decibel is not a specific value, but a way to express the ratio between two values. These values can be electrical signal, power, or sound pressure level. The way that we can tell which of these values is being referenced is by the suffix that is used after the dB abbreviation. For instance, dBm, for milliwatts, is used to express loss or gain in power. dBv is used to express loss or gain in voltage. And dBspl is used to express loss or gain in sound pressure level, also known as volume, which is what we'll be discussing going forward. But first, let's take a look at two other key points to defining a decibel. Logarithmic units and the comparing of two values. In order to understand a logarithmic unit, we must first understand both linear and logarithmic scales. On a linear scale, each tick is incremental to the previous and the next tick. Notice on the linear scale that the difference between 8 and 9 is equal to the difference between 9 and 10. In fact, the difference between any two sequential values on a linear scale is equal to the difference between any other two sequential values on that same scale. By comparison, on a logarithmic scale, each tick refers to the previous tick multiplied by some number. 
Notice that 9 on a logarithmic scale is only about half of 10. So in very simple terms, a logarithmic unit is used to express order of magnitude. Now, let's take a look at some specifics about comparing two values using dB. First, the compared values must be the same type. For instance, dBm for milliwatts cannot be directly compared to dBSPL for sound pressure. Nor can dBv for voltage be compared to dBSPL, or to dBm for that matter. Second, although dB is used as a way to express the difference between two values, the expression itself has no value. For example, if we start with the value x and we add 10 dB, we get the value y. If we then take the value y, add 10 dB to that, we get the value z. If we want to express how much greater y is than x, we can do so by saying it is plus 10 dB. Also, we can say that z is plus 10 dB greater than y. However, we cannot say that the value that stands by itself is plus 10 dB. Notice that the difference between x and y was plus 10 dB. The difference between y and z was also plus 10 dB. However, they are not the same dimension or value. Think of it in terms of percentages. We can say that y was 90% of an increase over x. We can also say that z was a 90% increase over y. But stating that either of these values alone is 90% makes no sense. 90% of what? Essentially, the decibel gives us a practical way to express the differences between these values. Now, let's dive into sound pressure level just a bit more. Decibel sound pressure level, or volume in layman's terms, is abbreviated as dBSPL and is relative to a minimum level. In other words, 0 dBSPL is not silent, but it's the average of the human absolute hearing threshold. Your ears can clearly hear a volume difference of plus or minus 6 dBSPL. An important point to remember is that dBSPL changes with distance. A roaring rocket launch seems much louder at 150 feet than it would from 500. This is especially important to us here at Valcom because it directly influences the placement of paging speakers and horns. We know that when someone moves away from a loudspeaker, that the perceived volume decreases, just like moving away from that roaring rocket. Because of this, the published dBSPL rating of a speaker is measured from a distance of one meter directly in front of it in an attempt to accurately express how loud it can be. As you move away, the volume decreases by 6 dB each time that the distance doubles. If we look back at our sound pressure level chart, we can see that the 58 dB level in this example is actually slightly lower than normal conversational volume. Someone talking louder than normal in this area could drown out pages or announcements. This is what happens when paging loudspeakers are placed too far apart. This is also true if we move too far off to the side of a loudspeaker. The angle away from the center of a speaker is known as the dispersion angle. As you move outside of this angle, the sound pressure diminishes by 6 dB. As you may recall, a 6 dB change in volume is noticeable to your ear. So, if paging speakers again are placed too far apart, like in a long office hallway for instance, a noticeable difference in volume will occur when passing in and out of the dispersion angle of each speaker. This is especially true if the speakers are used for background music or in an environment where pages are frequent, like a noisy airport gate area. Moving speakers closer together so that dispersion angles meet at ear height results in much more even coverage.